There are a variety of strange little tidbits about the Pittsburgh Steelers franchise that have sort of trickled their way through years of NFL history storytelling. Fun facts, anecdotes, whatever you want to call it. The franchise is loaded with some highlights, some lowlights, and some, well, some that are just random. There is one specific piece of Steelers trivia that really jumps out at me in particular, too. How about the fact that they are the only team in the entire NFL to have their organization's logo featured on just one side of the player's helmets? So, while all of the other NFL teams, the other long-standing franchises in the league included, feature the logo printed on both sides of the helmet, no, no, that's not how it's done in Pittsburgh. The Steelers players only have it on the right side of their helmets. And while it is pretty bizarre that only Pittsburgh does it this way, I suppose it's to be expected, considering that the team has been around as long as it has. When you have that kind of staying power, no one's really going to come along and tell you that you have to start changing one of the little quirks you have with the way you run your organization. After all, the Pittsburgh Steelers are undoubtedly one of the NFL's crown jewel franchises. Not only has the franchise been around pretty much since the onset of professional football, but it's also become one of the most successful organizations to ever do it, especially in the Super Bowl era. Pittsburgh is tied with New England for the most Super Bowl titles at six, and they've both played in 16 conference championship games and hosted 11 of them, which is more than any other team in the NFL. It all adds up. It is always either the legacy teams or the super successful teams that get away with these kinds of stunts. And the Steelers... Well, the Steelers just so happen to be both. Anyway, like I said, on their way to all of that success that the Pittsburgh Steelers have seen throughout the years, they have developed a few interesting quirks. Quirks that the league's younger franchise don't have, but by far one of the strangest aspects of the Steelers' brand has to do with the positioning, or lack thereof, when it comes to their iconic logo. The Steelers' logo depicts three diamonds, one yellow, one red, and one blue, positioned next to the team's name. And really, it is almost synonymous with the NFL at this point, similar to the Dallas Cowboys star, which makes sense when you think about it, because the unmistakable Steelers logo is in, on, and around everything Steelers. It accents the decor around the team's stadium, it's printed smack dab in the middle of the 50-yard line in Heinz Field, all over the walls of the team locker room, the jerseys, and of course, the one side of the players' helmets. So let's dive into some of the history behind one of the NFL's and really professional sports most recognizable logos and uncover the real reason why the Steelers only have the logo printed on one side of their helmets. The epic story behind the Steelers' single logoed helm dates all the way back to 1933, when then-Pittsburgh Pirates, no, not the baseball team, the Pittsburgh Football Club, which also used to be known as the Pirates, was purchased by Art Rooney, a legendary figure in Steelers and NFL lore. One quick side note, while it may seem strange that the two different local sports teams shared the same name, it was actually pretty commonplace at the time because baseball was the overwhelmingly dominant pro sport in America. So many of the up-and-coming football programs felt it would benefit them to sort of piggyback off their neighboring MLB team's success, in hopes of more effectively building a relationship with the pre-existing fan base. Anyway, following an underwhelming response to a Name the Team contest he ran through a local paper, Rooney pulled rank and chose the nickname Steelers. Between the fact that the Steelers was also the name of a popular local high school program, and the region's storied tradition in the steel production industry, it all made perfect sense. I mean, come on. It is referred to as the Steel City, after all. So it should be expected that the city's football team would identify so strongly with its signature industry. The three stars are actually called hypocycloids, and the team started using them as its logo back in 1962, of course, at Rudy's command. He had worked out a deal with his contract at the American Iron and Steel Institute. Robert Sexton, who was an employee out of the Pittsburgh office of Cleveland-based Republic Steel, suggested that the Steelers adopt the industry logo, feeling that collaborating with the area's football team was an amazing opportunity for some product placement. Rooney loved the idea and had graphic designers draw up a very similar logo for their organization, although there was some contention within the partnership, as some wanted the Steelers to inscribe steel within the logo instead of Steelers, Eventually, after some back and forth, cooler heads prevailed, and they were able to go with the actual name of the team, which, if you ask me, was probably worth holding out for. Then, with 
recent debate settled, the Steelers made a couple of very minor alterations and put the three colored stars as their logo. Interestingly, each color is actually supposed to represent and promote the three different attributes of steel. The yellow lightens your work, orange brightens your leisure, and blue widens your world. While the validity of these claims is somewhat in question, nevertheless, a statement was being made. They would eventually amend these admittedly arbitrary definitions, deciding that it was better to have each color represent the three primary materials used to make steel, yellow for coal, orange for iron ore, and blue for steel scrap. Once it came time for the Steelers to implement the new, fresh logo it had prepared to take on in the 1960s, legend has it that they decided that they wanted to test out some potential placements for the logo to see how it looked on the helmet. There is one important contextual detail to note before we get into the real reason that the Steelers had, and subsequently have, their logo only on the right side of their helmet. And that is, the Steelers were not always the perennial powerhouse that we know them to be today. In fact, going back to before the AFL-NFL merger, it was quite the opposite. The Steelers were known almost as a laughingstock of the league. During the days of the pre-merger NFL, the Steelers were only known for being the oldest team to never have won a league championship, and honestly, that wasn't even the worst of it. They qualified for the postseason just once between 1933, their first season in the NFL, and 1962, the year that they were testing out these new logos. Just one time! That that is insane! It was so bad that during that stretch, the Steelers finished with a winning record just twice. This was a whopping 29 years of futility, and for a program that modern NFL fans generally consider to be the cream of the crop year in, year out, no less. So how does this relate back to the whole logo on one side of the helmet situation? I'm glad you asked, because ahead of the 1962 season, when they were preparing for these new logos to be printed on the gear, they weren't exactly sure how it was going to look. And keep in mind, this is 1962, a time in which the NFL was not the money printing machine that we know it to be today. It wasn't like they were going to be popping out demo helmets left and right to test out the new designs. There was really going to be just one shot at this, at least for the season at hand. And then, if necessary, they could always make whatever tweaks they needed to and try again the following season. So once Rooney had the logo finalized, he had a son, Dan, who was also working in the family business of football, handle the task of getting these decals on the helmets. Likewise, Dan Rooney then reached out to the team's equipment manager, a man named Jack Hart, and instructed him to have the logos put onto the team's helmets for the year. And according to Joe Gordon, who was the team's former communications director, this chain of communication resulted in the iconic single-sided decals on the Pittsburgh Steelers' helmets. Very simple story. It was an arbitrary decision by the equipment manager, Joe Gordon told Sam Farmer of the Los Angeles Times. Dan Rooney, whose father, Art, founded the franchise, told him to put the decal on the helmet, and he just went ahead and did it and put it on the right side only. Dan was not specific as to whether he wanted it on both sides of the helmet or just one side, so once it was done, he never changed it. Anyone who knows sports knows how superstitious folks involved are. I mean, I'm sure as a fan, plenty of you have your own superstitions, whether it be a game day routine, a favorite viewing seat, or even a uniform of your own. And apparently, the Roonies were not on the outside looking in when it came to superstition. Because after the team rebounded from a 6-8 record in 1961 to notch a 9-5 record in 1962, they decided, to hell with the testing, we're gonna keep the uniforms exactly how they were, single logoed helmets included. While it still seems entirely unclear as to how much of an impact the logo on the helmet really had on the field, the team did post a second consecutive winning season in 1960 finishing with seven wins, four losses, and three ties. The success, however, would be short-lived, at least in their immediate future. Following that 1963 season, the Steelers went on to record eight straight losing seasons, and it wasn't just any kind of losing. They were posting some absolute stinkers. In 65 and 68, they only won two games, and in 69, it got worse, when they finished the regular season with a 1-13 record. 
even with the two winning seasons that they had right off the bat in 62 and 63, they still would post a record of just 46 wins, 88 losses, and 6 ties throughout the decade. Which was good for a measly winning percentage of 32.9%. A far cry from the epic Steel Curtain teams that would be gracing the city of Pittsburgh just a few years later. So while their initial logic may have been a little bit flawed, thinking that the whole having one logo on the helmet thing was going to entirely turn around a franchise that had absolutely stunk for over three decades, the silver lining in it all is that just a few years later, they would find the success that the Rooney family had been pining for all those years. And by the end of the 70s, hardly anyone thought of the Steelers as the lovable losers that they had been for oh so long. That sentiment was replaced by talk of their fearsome defensive unit and the inspired play of their new quarterback, Terry Bradshaw. Oh, and of course, eight straight playoff appearances during the decade and four Super Bowl titles to boot. And honestly, although the effects of the helmet design were probably marginal when it comes to the progression that the team made on the field, there is no denying that there is something about the Pittsburgh Steelers look. A look that is perfectly accented by a single logo on the right side of the helmet. But hey, which NFL team's logo is your favorite? Join us in the comments section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton, and hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.